Good afternoon, Mr. Hart. Hi. For our science club tomorrow, Adam, I need you to scoop two spoonfuls of X into these smaller containers. And Amy, you'll do the same for Y. Okay. okay. Solving a mystery to put them up. throw these containers away. No, we don't. We can use this for our mystery investigation today. Mr. Art, not, not again. again. Come on, where's your spirit of investigation? We can carry out some experiments to separate and identify these two unknown green salts. Experiments? I'm game for experiments. Come on, Adam, let's go. Mr. Art, how do we separate these two solids? Let's start by adding 200 ml of water to the mixture. Then, stir until no further change is observed. Amy, what do you see? I can see some solids dissolving in water to form a light green solution. Some solids remain undissolved. Now, we will filter the mixture and separate the solution from the insoluble solids. What do you observe? The filtrate is a light green solution and the residue a green solid. From these tests, we can conclude that the mixture contains an insoluble salt and a soluble salt. The insoluble salt shall be named X. The soluble salt, which dissolves in water to form a light green solution, shall be named Y. We will first carry out some tests to determine the identity of X. Let's rinse the residue with some distilled water first before transferring it to a boiling tube. Proceed to heat strongly for three minutes. Tell me, what do you observe? The solid is turning from green to black. Adam, as you are heating, withdraw several samples of gas from the boiling tube using this teat pipette. Be very careful not to touch the hot boiling tube using the heat pipette as it might melt. Now, bubble the extracted gas into lime water. I see white precipitate forming. This tells us that carbon dioxide is evolved during the heating. Very good! Now, 
think students, under strong heating, what kind of substance will decompose into carbon dioxide? Carbonates! <sighs> From these tests, we can conclude that solid X contains the carbonate anion. Coloured carbonates are generally insoluble in water. They decompose under heat to evolve carbon dioxide and leave behind an oxide as residue. Let's carry out a few more steps to determine the cation of X. To the cooled black solid, we will add sulfuric acid until no further changes is observed. Amy, stir the mixture and tell me what you observe. The black solid dissolves in the acid to form a blue solution. Good. Now, would you care to guess which cation that is? Mm, blue solution. Blue. CO2 plus. CO2 plus. Excellent. But we shall confirm its presence, the cation test, using aqueous ammonia. Amy, pour about 2 cm cube of the blue solution into a test tube. Slowly add aqueous ammonia drop by drop while shaking the test tube. It is copper 2 plus ion. Blue precipitate forms and dissolves in excess aqueous ammonia to give this nice deep blue solution. The black solid oxide reacts with acid to form a salt and water. The cation in this salt solution is the same as the one in solid X. It reacts with aqueous ammonia to form a blue precipitate. Adding excess aqueous ammonia dissolves the precipitate to produce a dark blue solution. With this, we can conclude that solid X contains the copper 2 cation and that X is copper 2 carbonate. Let's proceed to determine the identity of Y. We shall start with performing a cation test. Do you remember how to do a cation test? I will test solution Y with sodium hydroxide. <laughs> The green precipitate which forms is insoluble in excess sodium hydroxide. This would mean that iron 2 cation is present, right? Well done, guys. The cation in Y reacts with dilute sodium hydroxide to form a green precipitate which is insoluble in excess of the alkaline. With this, we can conclude that Y contains the iron 2 cation, Fe2+. One final test, guys. Let us determine the anion of Y. Let me carry out this final test while you tell me your observations and conclusion. With about 2 cubic cm of solution Y in the test tube, I am adding the same volume of nitric acid, followed by barium nitrate solution. I see white precipitate forming. Mr. Art, you did a sulfate test. Sulfate anions are present in Y. The anion in Y reacts with nitric acid and barium nitrate to form a white precipitate. This confirms the presence of sulfate anions in Y. With this, we can conclude that Y is iron 2 sulfate. Go home now, guys. You both had a long day. And to reward you for your hard work... Green candy! Thank you, Mr. Art. Thank you. Bye now, guys. Till our next chemistry.